Stan Marsh has always been South Park's everyman. He was in 1997 when the show first aired, and he is now two decades later. What makes Stan so interesting, though, is just how well he works. Animated shows usually take months to be created, but South Park episodes are made in a week. That allows the show to be incredibly topical and touch on subjects while they're still relevant to the public. So the writers are able to shape their characters to events in the real world in almost real time. The kids of South Park react to all the same trends as us, the audience. So we're able to see the evolution of the characters on the screen as it happens. And instead of happening over millions of years or just a few months, it's happening every week. With that being said, it's important to keep in mind that their target audience is people in the United States, but a lot of what makes Stan so relatable can be applied to people in other countries as well. He sort of preys upon human weaknesses, cynicism, the need to be liked, and the desire to be good in spite of roadblocks to that goal. Matt Stone and Trey Parker use Stan to drive home the ugly truths he embodies, as well as to show us how human those truths are. Look guys, the world is changing. What is an everyman? An everyman is a stock character, usually humble and benign, that compels the audience to identify with them. A character who is ordinary enough to be relatable to the average audience member. Everyman characters are often working or middle class and deal with everyday problems, be it school, work, family, or romance. They may also be placed in extraordinary circumstances, which makes them even more sympathetic as they're in over their head. So let's take a look at Stan. He's a cynic. It's no secret that Stan's a bit cynical. They dedicated an entire episode to it. In You're Getting Old, everything that Stan loved before his 10th birthday turns to literal crap. First his tween wave music, then movies and food, and eventually even his best friend Kyle. He goes to a doctor who diagnoses him with a condition called being a cynical asshole. The show reasons that some level of cynicism is normal as we age, but Stan goes beyond that level. His wires get crossed. Maybe our wires got crossed too. Which brings us to how this makes him relatable. We're all cynics. Americans are a crabby and not particularly trusting group of individuals. The Pew Research Center created something called a trust index that proves just that. It rates the population's trust in government and politicians with a numbered score. In 1966, we were sitting at a 62. In 2016, that number plummeted to just 17. Trust and cynicism have an inverse relationship to each other in the general populace. So yeah, maybe we're all just getting old. It is, unfortunately, inevitable. But it's no surprise we feel this way. The internet allows us to be inundated with a constant barrage of news. It seems like every other day, a scandal breaks about a politician or our president. Not to mention that fact that our screens have become beacons of tragedy making us aware of the atrocities happening all over the globe. Social media isn't just for keeping up with friends or posting vacation pictures, it's often a source of news for a lot of people. And to be honest, if we were smart, we would likely turn off our phones and give ourselves a much needed break from all the awfulness. But we also want to know these things because we want to help. It's why people help others. It's why people support certain causes or politicians, care about the planet, get angry, vote, fight, protest, counter-protest, etc. We all want to do our part. We all want to be good in spite of all the bad. So does Stan. Good people do bad things. Even though he's not out on the streets fighting against the man, Stan still wants to be a good guy. It's why he often sides with Kyle, the moral authority and voice of reason in the group. In a town as caustic and terrifying as South Park, the simple desire to be good says a lot about a person. However, Stan's actions don't always reflect what he believes. In the episode Butterballs, Stan's concerned about butters after he shows up to the lunch table with a black eye. He even accosts his friends for not being as outraged and worried as they should have been in that situation. He pushes Butters to get help and confide in an adult about his bullying problem. And that's where he should have stopped, because this good deed and genuine concern was, of course, turned into nonsense. 
Our misguided everyman agreed to help make an anti-bullying video, and in turn, he becomes a bully. He uses Butters for popularity, he loved the attention and praise he got from his peers, and then later on used Butters for money. What started out as genuine worry was turned into a cash grab. People, even ones with good intentions, can co-opt causes for clout. Think about Instagram influencers and YouTubers giving out food or money to the needy, all on camera. It's still no doubt a good deed, but there can often be a motive. Would they do the same if the camera was off? Probably not, because we live in a corruptible society. Corruption's not just for politicians. Moral corruption happens to the best of us, and it happens to the best of characters. While his morality often aligns closest with Kyle, the aforementioned good boy, he's still influenced by everyone else around him. And not everyone in his life is a good person. And it can be hard to be one when you're hanging out with a guy who fed a kid to his own parents. We're looking at you, Cartman. Bad people exist and they can rub off on others. Now with the internet, their voices can be magnified. Just imagine if Cartman had a Twitter. Comment sections can be brutal, sure, but more specifically, they're often polarized. Sources from one side will often demonize the other and create an echo chamber for their audience and vice versa. And the loudest voices are oftentimes the most aggressive. It can be overwhelming, especially for those who fall somewhere in the middle. Stan is oftentimes a reflection of that, an everyman surrounded by the extremes of every direction. And sometimes it's hard to not be dragged in by one side or the other. But it isn't just outside influences that can break our moral compasses. It's also our innate need to be liked. We just want to be friends. It's no secret that people are social creatures. The pressure to fit in with our peers doesn't end after school. It follows us into adulthood like a lost puppy, but way less cute. Stan feels the pressure to conform often. In the episode Elementary School Musical, Stan and the others watch the high school musical movie. Obviously, they're disgusted, and obviously Stan ends up hopping onto the bandwagon. Sadly for him, though, he was a bit late, and the big music number just ended up embarrassing everyone. Stan and his friends got wrapped up in the Metro trend and shunned Kyle for not following. He gave in to pressure from his dad in the Pinewood Derby episode and lied to the judges about the parts he used on the cart. Stan's just a regular guy, and he wants to fit in. We all do, even as grown-ups and social media only makes that desire worse. When we're able to constantly see what others are doing, we compare ourselves to them. And then our monkey brains go bonkers trying to imitate them. The internet's a little addictive, so even though all that comparison is bad for us, we keep scrolling anyway. It's not to say that social media is all bad, but if you use it too much, you'll destroy yourself on your quest to be liked. You'll end up like Stan, jacking it in San Diego. Wrap up. Stan's a normal middle-class kid, and his boring upbringing is the backbone of his everyman making. But his relatable nature transcends that. It's in the way he reacts to the world, and it's the kind of pressure he feels and the kind of person he is that makes him resonate with the audience. He's got the same flaws as a lot of us do. He struggles with all of us. But at the end of the day, he's really a pretty good guy. Simply put, he's the everyman for the modern man. But what do you think? Is Stan a reflection of all of us? Let us know. Make sure to check out our South Park characters Good to Evil video, where we rank the town of South Park on the morality spectrum. Hit that notification bell, and most importantly, stay wicked.